Good morning from the Sensa parking lot in Rivas, Nicaragua. We've got the Rad Pad factory. I'll give you a little update. We're, we're about 80%, 80% complete. So we've got a little more work to do. Um, we've got some more dirt to move from there, or to there, from there. Some rock from there, to put over there. Once we're done with that, we're pretty much done with the uh, the groundwork here at the factory. Uh, we built two rad pads to test out our jigs. I'll explain that to you here in a second. Uh, we got to our bottle jack leveling system, which is pretty rad uh, for putting up the rad pads. That is installed and working, and we did it on two of them just to, to really learn all we could learn uh, as quick as possible. And these things are rock solid. Uh, when we built them, they came together within one millimeter of error, so that was pretty awesome. So everything, I'll show you the cutting jig, but like that's the farthest out that we were, the farthest out out of all the cuts. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, the tent, they came together pretty well. That was from Toldos y Mas. That's a tent company out of Managua, and they did a pretty good job. It was a crazy job to lift that tent up on top of the structure that we built, um, but it happened. Uh, we're adding to the front, we're gonna add a catwalk so that you can come and view uh, how we build differently here at Radpad. It's gonna be pretty spectacular, very similar to the wine business where you'd walk into a winery and see grapes come in one door and then they would get crushed into juice and then they go in the fermenter tanks and then in the bottling line and then in the wine shop. So you're gonna get to see how metal comes in, how it gets made, and then how it gets turned into one of our showrooms. So over here we're gonna have a full bedroom uh, set up for people to view and check out. And over there the yellow one is going to be a kitchen. Uh, and it might be a kitchen bathroom. We might do a split, split unit. We have a drawing for that. Um, just to show the most economical way of uh, start your rad pad life. Uh, back here, this is our generator case. So one generator runs the entire factory. Um, we found a great source for generators in Managua. Uh, amazing prices, work super well, and they're super quiet. So we're just putting up um, some more metal on the back of this uh, to kind of hide the generator uh, from the view. This is where the walls exit the factory. They go out here and they go in the back. So we're gonna put down Piera Cantera so our truck can drive up and pick up the rad pad and take it to the customer's house. Um, yeah, these are the jigs. I'll explain those in just a second. Um, this is the cutting jig. That's the first step of what we do here at Rad Pad and how we build uh, houses differently. This is another sweet rad pad. This is the one that's gonna be the, uh, the kitchen here in the Sensa parking lot. So you'll be able to come up and check out actual rad pads, get a feel for them, and uh, see how quickly we make them. We can make a wall in one hour. <laughs> it's amazing. So uh, from Sensa, uh, we take the metal from over there, right there, and we bring it on over here, and then we bring it right in here. There's gonna be another piece of metal here, like I, I think I said, we're about 80%, 85% finished. Now it's all just the fun stuff. But this is the metal that we use. So this is galvanized steel. It's pretty anti-corrosive, doesn't rust. Um, we use a thick gauge. So it's 1.3 uh, millimeter thick. And it's overkill for strength, but for welding, it's way easier to weld when you have a thick gauge. The thin gauge is very challenging. You have to be a really good welder. Um, so we like to uh, just use the thick gauge. It costs a little bit more, but just a fraction in the overall cost of the house. So it's well worth having really good welds and uh, being able to do it quickly and efficiently. Um, speaking of welding, one of the most important parts about welding to make yourself look like a good welder is to have a very good cut. If the cut is wonky, if there's air gap in there, it changes the temperature of the weld and, and things go wrong. So getting a perfect cut is super important. Um, and then getting something that actually goes together uh, lengths and um, squareness is super important. So let's talk about the cutting jig here. So first things first, you take a piece of metal and you place it into the 
cutting jig, which is right here. So this three by three metal that we use fits right in there and you make sure it's snug up against there. Then we have five different lengths. There are five cutting lengths that make up all six walls. And that's a roof, a floor, and four walls of, of the rad pads. Uh, you put the metal in and then you decide what wall you're building. Um, say we're building a floor. So a floor is the most metal used. It's way overkill, it's super strong, but it's all right because we make it so efficiently and differently that we can afford to do that. So in order to do that, you're gonna need one, two, three, four, five yellows, and you're gonna need two blues. So what you do is you put in a piece of metal and you cut a yellow, and then you take the yellow and you place it on the jig. The jig is part of again how we do things differently so a yellow dot is where the yellow beams would go and they can only fit in there you cannot fit a blue in a yellow you cannot fit a green in a yellow the only thing that fits in a yellow is a yellow so you cut it and you put it on the yellow then you come back over here you repeat until you're done with all your yellows and then you cut your blues once you're done with your blues you put your blues on the space and then the finished laid out wall on this jig should look like the diagram of the wall that you're building. Now, this jig builds all six walls, all of them right here on this. It's pretty rad. Um, one of the things with welding, I'll try and explain this uh, the best that I can. This is a thing we use for painting, so don't mind the... <laughs> ah, I don't even want to show you that. Well, I'm going to anyways. Okay, so. Say if you needed to weld right here, and here, and here, and here, and here. If you brought your welder over here and you weld, did that weld, then you did this weld, what would happen is this metal would start to heat up. And when it heats up, it expands and contracts and things get weird. And if you did the next one and the next one and the next one, you'd have like a, a warped end piece. So what you need is a welder that can move quickly from one spot to another. So if we were to weld this, pretending this is a wall and it's 10 feet apart, right? You would come over here, you would weld this three inch, then you would come over here and you would weld this three inch. And then since we've made a system that's so movable, you could actually come 10 more feet over here and weld this one and weld this one. Then you'd come back to the first one and it would have cooled a bit and you would be able to do the next one. And then you'd repeat and you'd repeat. And it's very similar to I played drums for many, many years. It's like tuning drums. You don't just go around the circle of the drums. You go across one, then the next, then the next, then the next, then the next. And that's the welding system that we found where it doesn't warp the metal. That's super freaking important when you're making walls that have to clip together like Lego. We've done it, yay. So the way we did it was we built, first of all, our cutting jig at a low enough height where you could step over it. So everybody has to be able to step over the wall and get into position nice and easily. Then we added this track here. This track is really cool because it has these wheels right here. These wheels sit on the track and it allows the entire um, welding cart to move left and right all the way down the track up and down easily then what we did was we added of course the power to it so it comes and it doesn't get in the way but we put the welder on there's two identical ones here this is the finishing table and that's the welding table so the welder is actually on this cart and um, it has all the tools that you need uh, right there built into it. So everything you need, you got a grinder, a cleaner, everything. But this cart itself can now move. See how it moves like that? It can easily slide. They're locked into place right now because it's windy. Um, but it can easily slide from one side to the other. And this big cart on those tracks that I just showed you can move from front to back. So you can move, it's like a 3D printer kind of. You can move around super easily. Another thing we did was, I, I'm kind of proud of this one, um, is I love watching uh, people work and then look at where do they spend the most of their time? Where's their frustration? How can I help with that? And uh, help develop a system that gets rid of it. So one of the things they did is they had these like clips uh, that you ground 
um, when you weld something, you have to actually clip this, this cord to it, and it grounds it and creates a loop, which makes an arc so you can melt metal, basically. And they would always be trying to find a place to clip the metal, the, the clip to, and it, it doesn't clip on three inch pieces, and, and it was hard, and, and they had to do it every time they moved around. So we just tried clipping the, the clip to the cart, and since the cart has metal screws that attach to the metal track, that attach to the metal track wheel, which attach, attach to the jig, which the metal is sitting on, the ground worked. So we just grounded the welder to the cart, and now they don't have to mess around with that. And that, that, that seriously saved like, I bet 20 minutes or more than 20 minutes a wall, they'd be messing around trying to find a place to put that, that clip thing. Uh, so now it's just screwed right into the cart and they don't, saved another 20 minutes. That's how we get down to an hour, shaving 20 minutes at a time. So over here, the jig, what it does is if you cut it, which you, you can't cut it incorrectly. So once it's cut and it's placed in here, we know that it's super tight to fit. Once it's super tight to fit, we know that the angles, the squareness is absolutely perfect because we made the jig absolutely perfect. That took a lot of skilled workers. There's only one worker that I know that can recreate the jig and that's Louis. His ability to measure and execute perfection is, well, like 30 years of building. So he can build this jig so well that when you put a piece of metal into it, it cannot be put in wrong. So it's completely square, it's completely level, it's totally put together and welded right, moving quickly back and forth. Um, the welders here, I mean, I've seen our first welder went from, I'd say like a four or a five on the welding chart of like, that I'm happy with, to maybe a seven or an eight, you know, in a week or two, two weeks of working on the jig. You know, went from a four or five to a seven or eight, and that's pretty amazing. That usually takes like a year or two, um, but only a couple of days. So that's that jig. Uh, then the next challenge is you have to weld the bottom of it, and welding underneath things sucks. I watch people, the sparks are coming over their face. It's dangerous, they're on their back on the ground. It's just is stupid, you know, I don't like it. So what we do is we take the wall, you move the, uh, the cart all the way past the end, it sits off there, and the whole wall, you lift up, stand it here, and then flip it on this one. This one again, you know, moves out of the way, of course, and the wall now is upside down. You just finish up your little welds, and you've got the bottom on the top, and at that point, we add our mounting brackets. Our mounting brackets are so simple and so cool. Like, we built all kinds of brackets and like these just crazy stuff and we were trying to get them manufactured and blah 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 and then we just did this and this works perfectly there's nothing better than that it's absolutely fantastic so what we do is we take a three by three by six plate and we weld it to uh, the frame here on the wall on the finishing uh, welding table over here and that's the last job these um, these are pre pre-made what they are is uh, we round we round the corners and clean them off and we pre-drill the four holes in the plate and make sure the holes are bigger than the screw so when we fire the screws into it it doesn't hold on to the plate it just pinches it together works fantastic it's so strong I'm so happy with the system uh, for putting it together so you can see this wall has one two three four, five, six uh, points where it mounts. Um, man, just coming together with the design for this uh, rad pad because it only, the amounts that it uses, like wood framing, uh, it's so much different than building out of wood and the way to build it with this least amount of metal, um, it's really, we've just kind of gone over and over, how do we do it with less? How do we do it in less? How do we do it faster? How do we do it easier? And uh, that's what we've come up with. So those are the Rad Pad cubes. They're roughly 10 feet, they're three meter by three meter inside. Um, they're mainly finished with glass and mirror. Uh, the mirror is phenomenal for uh, um, R value. It just takes the sun and reflects it and there's no heat transfer, it's amazing. So mirrors, and it looks so beautiful. 
Um, when you see this cube built with mirrors and you see yourself looking back at you, you just kind of like it. So that is uh, another thing that's come along. The flooring, what we do is we do this insert of, um, this is only the first coat of paint on this, by the way. Um, we do an insert uh, of a concrete board that goes across here. These are 16 inch spaces. It's mounted on a nice L bracket in there. And we give enough space for you to choose whether you want to do a wood floor, whether you want to do tile floor, whatever you want, but you actually get to see and feel the metal. So it becomes flush, like say if it were tile, tile in here, uh, then metal and tile, then metal and tile and metal. So it looks really, really cool. Um, that's the flooring. The roofing is this great company called Eco. One of our partners turned us on to this guy that builds foam. He's a foam fanatic and he builds his roofing. I never, I seen it before, but until I played with it and jumped on it and stuff, I was like, wow, this guy's a mad scientist. He's created the greatest roofing material of all time. And it's super easy. He cuts it to any length we want. So we basically do one meter over each side. So we'll take a um, five meter piece. So it uh, sticks out a meter on each side and then we put five pieces so it sticks out a meter all the way around the rad pad um, a flat roof it's phenomenal it's insulated it's corrugated steel it's powder coated it's uv it's everything it's amazing stuff so the roof and the flooring uh, the walls are all pretty much mirrors uh, the power is a solar power system that's just so simple 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 lee's coming to do all that next week um, and then you can take it from there with Sinsa. So then you get to go over to Sinsa and choose all your interior, everything you want, your toilet, your sink, your lights, your all that stuff. You get a crazy awesome discount. They install it for you. It's a uh, pretty sweet uh, relationship we have for sure. Uh, then this is the last part I wanted to share with you. So like I was saying, I've been in the wine business for quite a long time. And in the wine business, it's all really about explaining the story in the bottle, how that grape came to be the wine that you were tasting. So you'd walk into a factory. The last factory I did was called Farming Karma. It's out of Kelowna, British Columbia. And it's a one of the fastest pro juice production facilities in British Columbia. So it turns apples into carbonated soda in cans uh, right in front of your eyes. It's amazing. So. Over here, what we're doing is something very similar. We're building this up to be a catwalk here. So there'll be, instead of this little chain viewing area, you'll actually be up, lifted up. You'll walk up onto a catwalk. And on that catwalk, you'll get to look down. And from up there, you'll see a wall actually being made, them cutting, doing all that. We'll also have uh, big screen TVs just right here hanging in the air above you where you can actually watch video content of us explaining the whole process. So you'll be able to walk over and see how we're building differently at RadPad and then see if it's something that'll work for you because uh, the it's limitless. Like a RadPad, you take a cube like that, well, I don't know what you want. You want a yoga studio in your backyard? You want a extra kitchen? You want an extra bedroom? You want to start an Airbnb business? You want to do a barber shop? You want to do a nail salon? Anything you want to do, a rad pad can be for you, pretty much. That, that's a good one. Anything you want to do, a rad pad can be for you. Something there. I'm going to try to remember that. Um, but you can get one of these things put anywhere. They, they move anywhere. It's so simple for us to move. Uh, the factories themselves operate with two people building building rad pads all day long. We're gonna start a night shift here pretty soon. We have so much demand for rad pads, it's amazing. I feel super blessed. I'm so stoked for everybody that's helped me get to this point. I'm so stoked for everybody that's jumped on, that is invested, that is part of the team, all the builders, the workers, um, everybody who makes comments and supports. Uh, thank you so much, I'm just pumped. Um, and then to rebuild these factories because we have a recipe now and it's so simple and uh, repeatable. So next stop is Tola. And uh, after that, I see our next stop being San Juan del Sur and making sure we can build enough rad pads um, in the speed 
that people are demanding them right now and be able to deliver them. So Cinsa delivers metal all around the world and now they're going to deliver metal to our little factories and then our factories are going to be close enough to our target markets for us to be able to deliver and set up the rad pads super quickly for people. Um, and again, I mean, I'm blown away. I said we'd build a wall in an hour and I was totally joking when I said that. We didn't even have a jig or anything. We built the colossal one that we started on one without a jig and we built it and it's our reminder of why we don't build build for building houses we build for building systems to build houses and um, uh, one hour one wall holy cow like it's amazing to see it happen like what you built that wall in one hour and it's completely finished and it looks beautiful and it's perfect that's insane so we need six walls to build a rad pad so that's six hours you can build a rad pad that's amazing so you know within a week we can build your project get you uh get you whatever it is you want kitchen bathroom deck uh bedrooms whatever it is that you need we can do and we can do it quickly and we're training people to be able to use the uh the jigs that we've built and the systems We've implemented some new tools, like we've upgraded from the standard stick welder, which is used here in Nicaragua, to something like a MIG welder. It's called an Easy Flux welder, and it's almost like a hot glue gun. It's so much easier to use. I mean, I'm not a welder, but I can freaking weld really well with um, one of these one of these MIG Easy Flux welders. And then, as far as cutting, I mean, I don't know. There's perfect, and then that's all. So we cut perfectly every single time. Woo! I'm pumped. I'm going to get to work now. Alex is showing up on a Saturday because we just love to work here. And we're going to try and get this whole thing finished this week. You'll be able to come down to Rad Pad at Sinsa in Rivas and see a Rad Pad being built for a super happy customer.